Hey guys, last time I showed you how to implement a simple game mechanic for a hyper casual game in the Construct 3 game engine. I thought it would be interesting to see how to accomplish the same thing in Godot. So let's have a quick look at what this looked like in Construct, and then we can start implementing it in Godot. Remember, a simple falling or catching or dodging mechanic like this really can form the basis for an addictive mobile hyper casual game. So let's have a look at how to achieve this in Godot. And here we are in Godot. Now let's first start off by making sure that the window size is the same as what we had in Construct. So let's go to the project settings, let's find display and window and change it to 480 by 854. This was SD portrait size in Construct. The idea is that we're looking at a cell phone screen. Now let's set up a new scene. This will be our game world. We'll use a 2D node and then we'll go ahead and set the background in the game world. Let's rename this game world and we can add a sprite here which we'll use as our background. Now we won't give the sprite a texture, instead we'll give it a gradient and we'll go ahead and make a new gradient and choose a color. In Construct we had green, so we'll just choose green here again. So we'll go to the gradient and we'll double click, choose green and choose green on the other side as well. And there we go, we have our gradient. And what we'll do now is resize this to fill our game window so that the background takes up the entire frame. We'll just resize this neatly. And now we have our background. Now we can create, save our scene and then create a new one for the player. So because this is just a simple hyper casual game we will use an area 2D which we will move around with the arrow keys and it will also allow us to detect collisions we'll rename it to player we'll add a sprite and we're just using placeholder graphics so I'm just going to use the Godot icon and we'll grab a collision shape and fit it to our sprite. This is a nice little rectangle. So we'll zoom in and adjust it so that it fits over our sprite neatly. And now we have a player object. So we'll group everything together so we can move it as one. And the player will be at the bottom of the screen, somewhere in the middle. We won't worry too much about exact positions right now. Let's go and add a script so that we can add player controls. So we'll create a new script, delete what we don't need here, and start adding in our code. Now we would like to have a variable that we can control outside of the script to adjust the speed. So we'll export one for speed, and we need a variable to adjust the velocity of the player. That would be speed and direction and that will be a vector too. We also need to know the screen dimensions and that's so that we can bind the player to the layout so that he can't escape the edges of the screen and we're not doing screen wrapping here so we'll just keep him in the screen just like we had it in Construct. So we want to find out what the screen size is and we'll use the built-in method get viewport rect size. Now we have the x and y dimensions of the screen and we can use that a little later to clamp him into the screen X position. Set up a little local velocity vector in our game loop. And now we'll check for input. So if they are pressing the right arrow, which is UI right in our input map, then we're going to adjust the velocity by positive one and if they are pressing the left arrow 
which is UI left in the input map, then we will adjust the velocity by negative one. Now that we've got that, we should check to see if they are moving, or oh, well, we'll come back to that. For now, let's adjust the position. So their current position will be their current position plus the direction they're heading in multiplied by time, and we'll now clamp the player into the screen boundary. This is the same as the bound to layout behavior in Construct 3. Stops an object from leaving the layout. So now we'll clamp him on the Y as well. Not that that's necessary since the player can only move left and right, but just to show you that it can be done. Right, if we save this, test it you'll notice the player can't move and that's because we didn't multiply their velocity by speed so we need to check to see if they are indeed moving and then multiply their velocity by speed so if their velocity dot length is greater than zero which essentially means they are trying to move well, we then need to specify how fast they can move because at the moment their velocity is zero. So we need to multiply their velocity by speed, which we've set at 200, that'll allow them to move along the bottom. And there we go, we have our player movement. Right, our next step is to create the enemy or the falling object or obstacle scene it's going to be done in the same way as our player we'll use an area 2d we'll use a sprite and we'll give the sprite a collision shape and then we will set up its behaviors so these things have all been selected before so they're all here in the recents we'll add an area 2d and rename it to falling object we will give the area 2d a sprite so that we can see what the object is and again we'll just use the Godot icon and now we'll add in the collision shape we'll make it a rectangle again and we'll just fit it over our sprite like so we'll group everything together save it okay let's move it it's gonna fall from the top somewhere in the middle there now let's add the code for our falling object let's get rid of all this that we don't need let's start fresh have our uh, process delta game loop and we will set the y position of the falling object to a random position between 5 and 10 set up the area entered signal so if something collides with the falling object it will be destroyed Now we 
return to the game world. Let's add our script for the game world. And what we'll do here is we will set up a variable called an obstacle and we'll preload it with our falling object scene. So an obstacle in our game is one of the falling objects. And then we'll set up a an amount, a random amount between 0 0.3 and 1 second for the timer that we're going to add. And now we'll get everything ready here in the ready function. And what we'll do here is add our timer. And we will say, um, we'll start the timer and we'll use the random time that we created in the, uh, in our variable here as the time chosen for the timer. And we'll connect the timeout signal so that each time the timer restarts, it creates a new falling object. So our, we'll just grab our screen size again. Use our get viewport rect dot size, and we'll then be able to pick a random position on the x um, value for the screen size, so that the falling objects appear randomly along the x axis at the top of the screen so we get a random position from zero to screen size x so they can be anywhere along the x axis but they'll always appear from the top which is the y the minus 600 so somewhere near the top of the screen they'll always appear at that y position so they'll always appear at the top but it'll be random on the x Now we can create an obstacle. So we'll load So to instance one of these obstacles, we just use the built-in instance function, and then we need to add it to the scene by using the add child method. So we'll add a child, and it'll be an obstacle, and we'll put it at the position that we chose. Let's add our falling object to the game world scene and let's add our player to the game world scene. And if we run it, we can see it should work the same way it did in Construct. We have objects falling and a player who can dodge or catch them. And this can be modified to be any kind of hyper casual game really. It's a good start. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. See you again next time. Game, Game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. Journey.